Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a 3D Endless Runner in Unity and welcome to episode 7. In this tutorial we're going to create our infinite generation of our level. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So there are two key things to the whole generation of this level. The first thing was the section itself, and if you remember, each section has an under segment which is exactly 50 in length on the scale. So that will come in useful in the future because basically it means that if we shifted the first section into this position, just 50, it means that it will basically integrate seamlessly. So it's the same with this second segment that we created last tutorial. If we move it to position 100, it's seamless in its integration. So that is how we're going to create that infinite generation. So the first thing I want to do is create um, basically three distinctive sections, uh, just so we can see that it is randomly generating each one. So this first one we'll leave as is. The second one, I'm just going to randomly add in a couple of uh, plants, just so we can see that um, it is indeed different, because I, I want to kind of illustrate just how different this can be. So let's uh, perhaps move this big rock over here. Let's also duplicate it and create another one here, maybe. Uh, let's also delete that big log. Uh, let's maybe replicate the tree. So at this point, um, what you guys should really do is design at least three different sections of your course. So this one does look a little bit different now. Um, I mean, it doesn't need to be as detailed or as undetailed as mine, I should say. Uh, but one thing I do want to kind of point out just before we go any further into this is if you add any more from the project window here, they won't actually go into the correct sections. So just make sure that you shift everything into the correct section. And what I'm also going to do is rename this section. Instead of having the brackets one, I'm just going to keep it as section. There is a reason for this and it will become apparent a little later on in the series. Uh, so for now, I'm going to duplicate that section once again, and I'm going to shift it over here into the third position right there. So it should be at position 100. I'll type it in. There we go. So if we look here, the first section is zero. Second section is 50. The third section is 100. And once again, I'm just going to get rid of a few things and add a few different things in just so things clearly look a little different here. Again, it will become very apparent a little later on and as i said earlier if you do add anything just make sure you move it into the correct section so i'm going to put the tree there uh, i'm going to have another one of these small rocks just over here in fact i might have a little line of them about there and let's have one more plant in for good measure about there and let's add those final things into the final section now, what we're going to do is we are going to randomly generate one of these three sections to start off with. Now, the ultimate and best thing to do really is to always have one static section to start with. So I would always like this first section to be the first section no matter what. Um, so what we'll do is we will duplicate this section, the very first one, hold control, press D move it up here and we're going to rename this to start section now this one is going to perform slightly differently than all the others uh, but basically we just want to make sure we have a clear run for a couple of seconds with our character again if you play timmy and mousy you'll probably understand why this is the case so let's just make sure oops in fact, before we do anything, what I think we should actually do is move these sections. So section, section, and section, move these behind here. So these will not be visible if we press play. But again, there is a reason why they won't be visible, but they will be eventually when we generate. So let's just quickly get our start section into position. So let's just move that tree there. Let's move that rock to there. 
Let's move this rock over to there. And yeah, that should do for now. So let's get round to some infinite generation. So our starting position is going to be 50 on the Z or Z axis. The reason being is because this start section, the static one, is at zero. So let's go to our scripts folder. Let's go into environment and let's right click, create C sharp script, generate level. And let's open this up in Visual Studio. So while this is loading up, let's discuss how we're going to do this. We're going to use an array. Now, obviously, the more objects we have, that's why we use the array, the longer the script could become if we didn't use an array. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we declare a variable as a game object and use square brackets, it means we can have as many variations of that game object as we want. So let's start by declaring that as the first variable. Public game object and then open close square brackets and then we can call this whatever we want obviously it's got to be descriptive in the right sense you can't call it purple monkey dishwasher because that's not what this is uh, so let's just call it section and the semicolon next thing is we're going to need um, an actual position so public int and we'll call this z pos. Now, remember, mine goes up in 50s. If yours goes up in 100s, you know, your, if the length of your section is 100, then yours is going to be a little bit different. But the default value of this z pos or z pos is going to be 50 because that is the first place we actually generate a section. Next, we need a Boolean because we need to know whether we are generating a section or not. So we're not going to generate everything all at once. The idea is we're going to generate a section every couple of seconds, just so as we don't hog up all the resources instantly. And we will be removing uh, sections that we have ran over a little later on in the series. We just need to get something in place first. So we'll have public bool creating section. Uh, by default, that will be false because we won't be. So how does all of this work exactly? Well, we don't need the start method, but we do need the update method. And we're basically going to create an if statement that says, if we aren't creating a section, then let's run a coroutine. So if, and in brackets, creating section, double equals false, then close bracket and open curly bracket. And now before we go any further, if we go to play and move, do you remember when we did all of the if statements here? We ended up putting an or in, didn't we? And the reason for this was basically because we wanted two different situations to occur. If basically, if we were pressing A or the left arrow, we had something. Luckily, it's not the same case here. So the double equals here is saying uh, if we are indeed true or false on this creating section. So it's asking, it's not telling. That's the reason why we use the double equal there and the single equal here. We're telling it what it is here. We're asking what it is here. That's the best way to think of this. So if creating section is equal to false, first thing we do is say creating section is equal to true. Just so as we can't run this coroutine over and over and over and over again. So Let's go a little further down. And now we type the words start coroutine. And in brackets, you can call this coroutine anything you want. I'm going to call it generate section. Open close bracket, close bracket, semicolon. Now, it will be underlined in red there if you're using Visual Studio, just like me. That's because generate section does not exist as a coroutine. What is a coroutine? A coroutine is a way of, think of it as a method, but you can actually add some time delay in there. So we are going to add a delay of time. So we're gonna wait for a couple of seconds between creating each section. You can't do that in a standard method, i.e. update or start. It needs to be in a coroutine. <clears throat> so let's create that coroutine called generate section. We need to type below our void update, i enumerator and be careful it doesn't default to i enumerable there 
there is a subtle difference between I enumerator and I enumerable. So if you end up typing I enumerable here, it will not work as intended. It needs to be I enumerator. Uh, so this is called generate section. And then open close bracket and open curly bracket. Again, this will underline in red. The reason it's underlining in red is because it's expecting some kind of delay in the game, uh, which we will basically do in a couple of moments. So next thing we need is we need to generate a number between basically between one, two and three currently uh, because we have three sections in our game. And I'm just going to move this original section to there just so as we've got them all together. So there's our first one. There's our second one. There's our third one. So we have three that we can choose from. Now, because we've got three that we can choose from, we need to now add an extra variable in here to basically generate which one we can have. So public int, and call this sec, short for section, and then num, short for number. So that means that down here in our coroutine, we can say sec num equals random dot range. And in brackets, zero, comma, three, close bracket, semicolon. So why have we done zero and why have we done three? So when generating an array, the very first instance of it is going to be number zero. And that will become apparent a little later on when we get into the inspector panel. And why have we chosen the number three? It's not because we actually have three different sections, it's actually because it will never generate that maximum number. It's expecting anything between zero and three. It's not expecting three. That's there. It's not really a bug. It's a little quirk you could think of it as. It will never generate that maximum number. So we could either have zero, one or two, which is still three numbers to choose from for our three sections. So once we've generated that random number, we then need to instantiate one of those sections based on whatever number it has generated. So instantiate and in brackets, we then tell it what we want to instantiate. So in this case, it's going to be section and then in square brackets, sec num. And basically what this is doing is it's saying we're generating whatever is in the section variable and we're generating whatever is in the array list of whatever is generated here and again it may sound a little bit confusing at this point but once we get everything running you will see exactly how all of this is performing so the next thing to do is tell it where we want to place it and we're going to say new vector 3 because we're working in 3d environment and in brackets the position on the X, Y, and Z. So if we go back into Unity, you can see that the standard position for X and Y is zero on all of them. And that's exactly where we need to go from there. So zero, comma, zero, comma, and the Z position, Z position is going to be 50 to start with. And then obviously it'll increase as we go along. So we need the Z position to be whatever is inside this variable, the Z pos. So Z pause and then close bracket comma and then to finish off we just need to give it the identity so in this case quaternion dot identity and that is how we declare the script or rather that's how the script can say there we're putting in a new object once it's done that all we need to do is then say that the position needs to increase by 50 so Z pause plus equals 50 semicolon and then finally we need to wait for a couple of seconds and then basically reactivate everything so it runs again so we need to say yield return new wait for seconds now this is the important bit because this is something we'll probably modify a little later on depending if we increase our speed but for now, I'm just going to do every two seconds, it will create a new section. And after that, like I say, the final thing is to basically restart the whole process by saying creating section equals false, semicolon, and save. 
Now, in its simplest state, that's how we infinitely generate a level. So if we head back into Unity now, give it a second just to compile, and let's attach that generate level script to our level control. And if we click it, we can see here, this is our script and there is an arrow next to section. That's the one with our array. So if we click it, we can see there's the size. We want it to be a size of three. So let's type three and hit return. And you can see element zero, element one, element two. Remember when I said earlier about generating zero, one and two? There we are, that's the reason. So now let's attach the first section into zero, the second section into one, the third section into two. And remember down here where we say we instantiate section with sec num. Remember that sec num is either going to be one, zero or two, which means that it's going to generate one of these. So logically, if we press play now, we should be able to see this in action. So I'm going to save my scene and I'm going to press play. And you can see already that it has generated and it is generating ahead of us. And you can see here we have all these clones. Now if we leave this guy running we should see that yep we do have all of this here. So you can see it generating all the way down there and like I say, it is very primitive right now. It's not exactly fantastic, but we now have that infinite generation. What I would recommend you guys do, so in fact, I'll leave him running while I talk now. Uh, so what I recommend you guys do is you build as many sections as you want for your level. Try and variate them, do different things, but don't build too many just yet. Have ideas in place. The reason I say that is because we're going to add some coins in the next tutorial. And those coins are going to be kind of cool. So just get some ideas together now. We're going to stick with just a couple of sections. We're going to add a couple more things into all of these. So don't get generating massive amounts of sections just yet. Hold fire. We have everything in place to generate it. We need to finish off the sections first. So yeah, like I say, next time we're going to have uh, coins and we'll go from there. Until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching, guys.